You're very welcome back. Now, more than 120,000 students across the country begin their junior and leaving cert exams today. While it is normal for students to experience some stress and anxiety during the exams, how do you keep it under control? Paul Gilligan, a CEO of St. Patrick's Mental Health Services, joins us now to share his advice for dealing with exam stress. Paul, you're welcome as always. Thanks very much. Paul, we were just having a chat there. Well, first of all, we should say good luck. We send good, positive vibes to <laughs> yeah. all out yeah. there. Yeah. You will get through it. You will do it. Yeah. And it's not the end of the world. It sounds like such a trite line to throw out, but it really isn't. We were just having a chat there about the notion of stress. And we kind of associate stress just with being a negative experience. But actually, you need stress to get you through the exams. Yeah, I mean, there's no, there's no young person out there doing exams today that won't feel stress. And the stress is really important because it motivates us. The key is to keep it managed. So don't get stressed about being stressed, but at the same hand, use it as a motivator rather than see it as a negative. OK, now when you say it's important to not let it get out of hand, how yeah. do we do that? How do we manage our stress? Well, the key is to, I think, focus on positive outlooks. Okay. Now, I know that's difficult because most young people are going to be sitting in their kitchen or in the car. They're going to be saying, I don't know this, I don't know that, I should have studied, OK? The point is, you know, A, you know more than you think you know. Okay. And it's really important to focus on that. You know, you've either been in school three years or six years, so you're picking up stuff. Secondly, you have done, you have done work. The second piece is to focus on the fact that uh, whatever's on that paper, uh, you will be able to answer stuff. Not, don't focus on what I can't answer or so-and-so didn't come up. It's all about taking a positive outlook. That can be difficult because we tend to be focused on the negatives. You know, you'll hear the media commentary now later on today saying people are disappointed because Platt didn't come up or whatever it might be. No, stay focused on the positive. Remember that whatever you answer will get you marks and you will have done better than you think. That's a good point actually you just made because it is English paper one that people are sitting down to today. So if what you studied for didn't come up, you rolled the dice and hoped it was A and it turns out to be B, how do you then cope with that sense of, oh no, in the exam hall, how do you kind of regroup and get yourself together? Yeah, I think, I think every young person is going to do that. They're going to look through the paper and go, yeah. oh no, what hasn't come up? No, try and do it the other way around. Look, look at what has come up. Remember, you know, once you start writing, you're going, to get, you're going to get marks. And I know there's pressure on people to get A's and B's, but at the end of the day, do the best you can on the paper. You're, the, no matter who you are, the paper will not be perfect for you. So go in with a positive outlook, pick on the pieces that you really feel you know well, and make sure you answer all the questions. And after that, you can do no more. Uh, beyond the normal stress that people are going to experience, and as you say, stress is a motivator, you actually need it to get you through the exams. Yeah. What about students who have mental health issues and are really concerned about how it's going to affect their performance? Yeah. Are there any kind of just relaxation techniques, simple ones they can use? Because obviously you're surrounded by people, so you're going to be feeling self-conscious as well. So what can you do in that situation, Paul, if you just feel overwhelmed by everything? Well, I think this applies to every young person. You've got to develop your own routine. So whatever makes you feel relaxed, whatever makes you feel confident, you do that. So you talk to young people who say, I want to get into school early so I can chat to others. There'd be other young people who'd say, no, I'm going in at the last minute. Yeah. Debriefing afterwards, very important, but do it in the way that you want. For young people with mental health issues, that's particularly important because they've got to be disciplined about their own emotional routine. Um, very important to get support. Uh, very important to debrief around emotions. You know, you'll find... Um, when you say debrief around emotions, what do you mean by that? Well, parents in particular, OK? You, you, your young person comes home from the exam, you want them to say, it went fantastic, it's brilliant, and you want them to be smiling. Inevitably, they will have a mixture of emotions. I cannot believe I did this. I'm really angry that, you know, these things came up when I thought they weren't going to come up. Let them, let them express their emotions. Particularly for young people with mental health issues, that's really important. But then the next piece is move on. If you take a bad exam, if you do a bad exam, the worst impact of that is that you let it impact on the next exam. So give yourself the space to express your emotions and then you're moving on. You're getting back to your routine and you're preparing for the next day. And what do you do as a parent now? Because this is an anxious time for parents, obviously, as well, yeah. not just for yeah. students. So what do you do if someone comes home at the end of the day, slams the door, marches up to their room, slams their bedroom door and will not communicate? Yeah. Do, you, do you leave them at it? What do you do? Because it's tough. You want to put your arms around them and say, how did you do? It'll get better, don't worry. But if they're defensive and if they're almost angry, how do you break down that wall? It's a big challenge for parents. Yeah. I mean, managing your own stress during this time is really challenging because, you, of course, you love your child. You want them to do well. You want, them, you want to be there for them, but you have to take your lead from them. 
So you've, you've got to step back. If they choose to go into their room and shout and scream, let them at it. If they want to talk to you, then be available. But don't impose what makes you feel better on them. If you do that, you're simply adding to their stress. And as a parent, you need to almost, it's like I suppose when parents drop their kids off for the first day at school and they're told to hide their own stress yeah. and to keep their tears for later. Do you need to do the same thing as a parent? Whatever stress you're feeling, just push it to the back and have a big smile. It'll all be great face on you. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, but be reasonable. You're not going to be chirpy this morning. Of course, you know, yeah. But be supportive. But also remember, whatever you're going through, your child is going through much more than that. So you've got to park all that. And I think when they come home in particular, you know, don't, don't let your anxiety spill out. You know, uh, non-directive questions. How did it go? Are you happy? That's enough. You know, not did plat come up, did blah come up? Yeah. Because that's really putting pressure on them. So it is difficult, though. And if you feel, you know, it is, if you feel as a parent that you're not able to cope with that, you need to step back and maybe talk to somebody else. Because many parents do actually find this really difficult time because they feel there's a lot at stake and they feel they feel for their, their child's child. future is riding well, on this. Yeah. Well, yeah, and also they've seen the work that the young person has done. Yeah. So they feel they want, they want fair outcomes. They want the child to achieve what they deserve. And sometimes parents have to contain their anger as well. So you but, have to step back as a parent. That's the best message for parents. Yeah, and take the lead from the young person. You know, be available. Don't step back f too far. Be available, but don't impose or don't let your own anxieties or anger spill out on, the, on that. And what about if a parent has very serious concerns? What if, like, because it's a long slog, the Leaving Cert, and Junior yeah. Cert as well, it's a bit of a marathon. So what if somebody isn't sleeping, is, you know, showing symptoms that a parent is genuinely concerned about from a mental perspective? What do you do then? I think you're going to find most young people will have difficulty sleeping. Yeah. They'll be stressed. They'll be tearful. Some of them will get very down. But... It, it's important to recognise if that becomes a pattern. So it's starting to interfere with their preparation, interfere with their lives, and then it's seeking help. So go to the GP. I mean, there are lots of helplines out there. Yeah. Make a call. Now, don't all, you know, you've got to be careful here. Don't over-dramatise things either. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and you yeah. do want a young person to get through. You want them to get through the exams. But, and I think it's also important to remember that their, beha their normal behaviour will change. But if you are concerned, do seek help. You know, We've got to keep exams in perspective. Yeah. In five years' time, the leaving It's hard to do when you're a student going through it because it's the be-all and end-all when you're doing it. Yeah, and yeah. It's, I'm sure all the young people doing exams will be saying it's grand for him to say that. <laughs> but in five years' time, they won't matter. Yeah. So it's important that young people remember that. It's also important that parents remember so that. So for, for students, focus on the positives, let yeah. go of the failures, and for parents, step back. Yeah. Okay. Also, take, take breaks, emotional and physical breaks, take breaks. Go for a stroll, watch a movie, do whatever you have to do. Exactly, listen yeah. to a CD, a bit of social media is fine. Don't get caught up in rumours or anything like that. Don't get caught up in negativity. But yeah, do you have, a, have a pattern where you're giving yourself space. Paul, thank you so much. Thank Great you. advice there. We're going to put all of that information up on our Facebook page um, if you need it. And good luck to absolutely everyone. As Paul said... It's not the be all and end all. No. It feels like it though. So I wish, I wish, and people work hard for it. So I wish everyone the best luck in the world. Now coming.